<coughs> hello, hello, hello. It is Science of Getting Rich night, and today I am on chapter eight. So I'm going to read the chapter first. I know this part is very boring for those that are watching, um, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. And I have a hard time getting into what I want to talk about with this chapter unless I actually read it first. So if you are getting any value at all in these um, chapters, you know where this post is, there's three little dots in the top right hand corner. If you click on that and and click notifications, you will get notified when I do go live because unfortunately it's not at the same time all the all the time um, I, I'm working on that so okay thinking in the certain way all right so if you guys remember chapter 6 um, turn back to chapter 6 and read this again now if you do not have this book please leave a comment let me know that I will make sure that you get one okay um, all right so turn back to chapter 6 and read again the story of the man who found a mental image of his house. I don't know if you guys remember that. He, he went through his mind and picked out all the things he wanted. You know, um, a stove he had, you know, for winter time to keep warm, a brand new rug. He had a, he pictured a bay window in his, in his best room. You know, so all these things he ended up with. But... <clears throat> you must form a clear and definite mental picture of what you want. You cannot transmit an idea <coughs> unless you have it yourself. You must have it before you can give it. Unless you, And many people fail to impress thinking substance because they have themselves only a vague and misty concept of the things that they do want to have or to become. It is not enough that you should have a general desire for wealth to do good with. Everybody has that desire. It is not enough that you should have a wish to travel, see things, live more, etc. Everybody has those desires also. If you were going to send a wireless message to a friend, you would not send the letters of the alphabet in their order and let them construct the message for himself, nor would you take words at random from the dictionary. You would send a coherent message, a sentence, one which meant something. When you try to impress your wants upon substance, remember that it must be done by a coherent statement. You must know what you want and be definite. You can never get rich or start the creative process into action by sending in unformed longings and vague desires. Go over your de desires just as the man I have described went over his house. See just what you want and get a clear mental picture of it as you wish it to look when you get it. That clear mental picture you must have continually in your mind. As the sailor has in mind the port toward which he is sailing the ship. You must keep your face toward it at all time. You must no more lose sight of it than the steersman loses sight of the compass. It is not necessary to take exercises in concentration, nor to set apart special times for prayer and affirmation, nor to go into the silence, nor to do occult stunts of any kind. Their things are well enough, but all you need is to know what you want and to want it badly enough so that it will stay in your thoughts. Spend as much time of your leisure time as you can in contemplating that picture in your mind. But no one needs to take exercises to concentrate his mind on a thing which he really wants. It is the things you do not really care about, which require effort to fix your attention upon them. Does that make sense? Uh, and unless you really want to get rich so that the desire is strong enough to hold your thoughts directed to the purpose as the magnetic pole holds the needle of the compass. 
it will hardly be worthwhile for you to try to carry out the instructions given in this book. The methods herein set forth are for people whose desire for riches is strong enough to overcome all, or, excuse me, to, I lost my place. <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, wow. Okay, the more clear and definite you make your picture then, and the more you dwell upon it, bringing out all its delightful details, the stronger your desire will be. And the stronger your desire, the easier it will be to hold your, your mind fixed upon the picture of what you want. Something more is necessary, however, than merely to see the picture clearly. If that is all you do, you are only a dreamer and will have little or no power for accomplishment. And behind the purpose must be an invincible and unwavering faith that the thing is already yours, that it is at hand, and you have only to take possession of it. Live in the new house mentally until it takes form around you physically. In the mental realm... Enter as one, at once into full enjoyment of the things you want. Whatsoever things ye ask for, <laughs> sorry, uh, when we pray, believe that we will receive them and we shall have them, said Jesus. See the things you want as if they were actually around you uh, all the time. See yourself as owning and using them. Make use of them in your imagination, just as you will use them when you are at your tangible possessions. Dwell upon your mental picture until it is clear and distinct, and then take the mental attitude of ownership toward everything in that picture. Take possession of it in mind, in full faith that it is actually yours. Hold to this mental ownership. Do not waver for an instant in the faith that it is real. And remember what was said in the preceding chapters about gratitude? Be as thankful for it all the time as you expect to be when it has taken form. The man who can sincerely thank God for the things which as yet he owns only in imagination has real faith. He will get rich. He will cause the creation of whatsoever he wants. You do not need to pray repeatedly for things you want. It is not necessary to tell God about it every day. Use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, said Jesus, <clears throat> said to his pupils, for your father knoweth that ye ye." have need of these things before you even ask for them. Your part is to intelligently formulate your desire for the things which make for a larger life and to get the desire arranged in a coherent whole and then to impress the whole desire upon the formless substance which has the power and will and the will to bring you what you want. You do not have to make this impression by repeating strings of words and make it by holding the vision with unshakable purpose to obtain it and with steadfast faith that you do attain it. The answer to prayer is not according to your faith while you are talking, but according to your faith while you are working. You cannot impress the mind of God by having a special Sabbath day set apart to tell him what you want and the forgetting him during the rest of the week. You cannot impress him by having special hours to go in your closet and pray. If you then dismiss the matter from your mind until the hour of prayer comes again. Oral prayer is well enough and has its effect, especially upon yourself, in clarifying your vision and strengthening your faith. But it is not your oral petitions which get you what you want in order to get rich you do not need a sweet hour of prayer uh, you need to pray without ceasing 
And by prayer, I mean holding steadily to your vision with the purpose to cause its creation into solid form and the faith that you are doing so. Believe that and you will receive it. If other people are putting doubt in your mind, get away from them. You need to hold that in your head. The whole matter turns on receiving once you have clearly formed your vision. When you have formed it, it is well to make an oral statement, addressing the supreme and reverent prayer. And from that moment, you must, in mind, receive what you ask for. Live in the new house. Wear the fine clothes. Ride in the automobile. Go on the journey and confidently plan for greater journeys. Think and speak of all the things you have asked for in terms of actual present ownership. Imagine an environment and a financial condition exactly as you want them. And live all the time in that imaginary environment and financial condition. Mind, however, that you do not do this as a mere dreamer and castle builder. Hold to the faith that the imagery is being realized and to the purpose to realize it. Remember that it is faith and purpose in the use of the imagination which makes the difference between the scientist and the dreamer. And having uh, learned this fact, it is here that you must learn the proper use of the will, which is chapter 9, how to use the will. But um, chapter 8, this, um, you know, it was Bob Proctor that originally said to read chapters 4, 14, and 7 in that order. And by doing that, do you go back then to uh, the first page and, and then read it? I, after reading those three chapters, it's almost like a sorting tool. You're going to know if you want to learn more or not. And, and, and therefore, you're going to take action. So we had a mastermind on this book here just a couple of months ago, and it was phenomenal. We had some unbelievable people uh, and wisdom that joined this group for the mastermind. We went through each individual chapter on a daily basis. It, it was eye-opening, to say the least. Um, and... A gentleman in that group, he he kind of explained this chapter like this, and I thought it was just eye-opening for me. So um, he said that there was a lot of scientific research that was done back in the 80s about the realm of the consciousness, you know, the area of consciousness one of the things that they learned uh, was very valuable to this book and this chapter. When you have a mastermind, as I said, a mastermind, a mastermind simply is two or more minds. Two minds put together creates a third mind, and so on and so forth. A mastermind is what's called nonverbal communication. So in other words, when we are visualizing, when you're trying to see that thing that you want, sometimes people do it in the way of affirmations. They are trying to speak it into existence. You know, everybody has affirmations, you know, 10 things that you're grateful for. I am so happy and grateful now that. By doing that, it does. It goes on and on, but nothing seems to happen. Why is that? Because saying the words alone does nothing. The words have to be turned into pictures, and it has to be accompanied with emotional energy. That is called the nonverbal communication. The universe. The universe doesn't know necessarily what your words are. It has no way of distinguishing whether they're good words or if they're bad words. 
it knows the picture that you are putting in your mind, you know, that movie, right? That causes a feeling. When, when you are envisioning whatever it is that you want to be or to become or, or have, that causes a feeling that is associated with the words that puts everything into perspective. Because the feelings, not the words, the feelings associated with the picture movie is what pushes out that energy into the universe. And then it knows what to do with that. And it sends back to you information in ways that are not in words. They are in feelings and they are in experiences. So like all of a sudden something just flashes into your mind and you have no idea where it came from. Okay, that is a nonverbal communication trying to come back at you. And it means that you need to be aware and grateful for those little things every single day. Because somewhere buried within those little things just might be that message that you have been waiting for. So we have to be aware of that. We need to get really, really good at visualizing what it is that you are and what do you want to become. Play it over and over again in your mind. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? What is it like to, to touch it? Whatever it is, you know? And then what does that feel like to have people receive your purpose? What an amazing feeling. Who is benefiting from what it is that you have become? Because it's got to be about more than just us. That is not enough. Okay? You can see it like a movie. You can feel it with every emotion associated with it. Vision is internal. It's who you are becoming and, and who you will become to deliver that purpose that you now have. Purpose is external. It is what you deliver to the world. Once you have all of this in your head with all of those feelings, now you have clarity. Okay, uh, I hope that was helpful, and next week will be Chapter 9. Have a great evening.